what we're actually witnessing in France. And I went on the protest last Saturday, um, which was in fact called the White March. And it was in honor of those who have been mutilated, not only injured, mutilated, uh, by effectively state-sanctioned violence and a militarized police force in France. So first of all, I don't have very long, but I just want to try and give you a summary and an update of, of what is happening and who are the Yellow Vests, who are the Gilets Jaunes. The movement began uh, on November the 17th, 2018, but actually, in my opinion, it began long before. Uh, there were a number of reports that were submitted by academics, uh, by geographers, by politicians, as far back as 2013, 2014, explaining the fact that at least 60% of the French population was on the verge of insurgents because of austerity measures that have been building up in France since actually Sarkozy's government, so since around 2008, when Sarkozy also dismantled um, the intelligence elements of the police forces, the national police forces, so he reduced during his uh, presidency, but it was then exacerbated by Hollande and then by Macron. He reduced the ability of the police to actually communicate with civil society in France. So from the first protest on November the 18th, the Gilets Jaunes encountered militarized police forces, extreme violence against peaceful protests. Where does the name uh, Gilets Jaunes come from, the yellow vest? Everyone in France has to, wear, uh, has to have a yellow vest in the car. And the theory behind this is if you have, or you're, you're in a road accident, you put on the yellow vest to avoid yourself being run over by a juggernaut on the same road. So it's perceived that putting on the yellow vest is saying to the government, you're not going to run us over. You're not going to railroad us. We have the right, the constitutional right to protest injustice. And that is what the Gilets Jaunes represent. It is an apolitical movement, grassroots movement. Uh, it has been portrayed in media, which has been fed its lines by the French state, who of course is in league with other European states. But what you will read is that the Gilets Jaunes is either homophobic, anti-Semitic, fascist, nationalist, <laughs> Nazi, far-right, etc., etc. One of the, in fact, Macron's budget minister has called them the pest brune, the brown plague. So he's described them, he's dehumanized them as a fascist far-right movement. Macron has attempted to peddle conspiracy theories such as Russia is behind <laughs> the Gilets Jaunes movement, no surprise there. Um, he has also dismissed them uh, I think he's tried to describe at least 50,000 members of the Gilets Jaunes being against the Republic, in other words, violently against the Republic. Um, he has tried to dismiss them as leftists or as rightists, far rightists. So what we're seeing is an attempt to dehumanize and denigrate this movement. I went on a march, and I think it's probably better if I actually um, try to talk you through my own experience last Saturday. I went on the march in honor of those who have already been injured by police violence. And that police violence is 100% sanctioned by the French state, by Macron's government and by his interior ministry. Why do I say that? Because even the Hu UN Human Rights Commissioner came to Paris, I think, less than 10 days ago. And her recommendation was that the police forces cease to use the LBD-40, which is basically a, a replacement for the flashball bullet, which is a, a, a rubber bullet, but its velocity is 10 times that of a paintball. This bullet should be used according to police regulations. So in other words, it should never be fired at less than around, I think it's around 20 meters away. We're seeing it being fired at as little as five meters the LBD launcher also has a laser sighting. What you're seeing here are a lot of photographs of French police using the LBD-40 launcher. They have a laser sighting. So this is an accurate precision weapon. 
Civilians are being deliberately targeted, and they're being targeted in the head. 19 people, and more than that now, because more people were hit yesterday in the Arc de Triomphe, have lost an eye. Uh, at the beginning of this month, a 30-year-old volunteer fireman was hit in the head, and you'll actually see the video at the end of this. He was hit in the head as he was walking away from the police forces. He had no weapons. He was walking away. They shot him in the back of his head. He was in an induced coma for almost two weeks. He is still suffering the after effects of that wounding, and his description was, they shot me like a rabbit. And in the video, you can actually see the police informing their colleagues to go and pick up the casings because they don't know it's us. So what we're seeing here is, despite the report from the UN commissioner, the highest court in France has ruled that the LBD-40 and the Glyph 4 grenade will continue to be used in protests. So they're overruling the UN Human Rights Commission. They're overruling human rights activists and human rights and police ombudsman organizations in France to continue and to sanction the use of these weapons against unarmed civilians. And those include children and elderly and disabled on these marches. The other weapon that is being used is the Glyph 4 grenade. The Glyph 4 grenade contains 25 grams of TNT. It contains also 10 gram rubber pellets. These grenades are being thrown at people, and they will literally amputate hands or cause hematomas in the leg, necrotic tissue. So they are mutilating people. And most of the people they are mutilating are young students, medics, anyone who was caught up in the melee or the mayhem that is being created by state security. Now, there was a... Um, Recently, there was a revelation of a police scientific laboratory report condemning the Glyph 4 grenade and saying it should never be used in crowd control situations. Christophe Castaner, the interior minister, stated that while he accepts the findings of the report, he will continue to use the Glyph 4 grenade until stocks are used up, but he hasn't specified the number of stocks. So this is a clear indication that Macron's government has no desire to bring law and order <laughs> back to France. What they actually want to do is to create a situation where there is effectively war between state security and the people, which are represented. The, the Gilets Jaunes have huge support across France, probably 70%. So this is a genuine movement. The violence and I witnessed this myself last Saturday, is being committed by a group of less than 300 who, who comprise, they have various names because it's very hard to identify them, but they are generally dressed in black, their faces covered, and they are the ones uh, doing the damage, burning the cars, breaking the windows, attacking the Gilets Jaunes. They attacked us last Saturday. Now, the French state has called them the casseurs, or the looters. They could also be given the name of Black Bloc. Some of them are Antifa. It's very difficult to identify them because they, they have no identifying markers on them when they arrive in the middle of the marches. But what I realized when I was on the march, they attack the Gilets Jaunes ranks. They actually attacked us at one point just before we set off on the march. No police intervened at this point, even though they were actually surveying the march from about 200 meters away from us. And this was the pattern of the march. So the police stayed behind us with their lights flashing around 200 meters. The black blocks or the casas would appear alongside us, break windows and disappear. So that the commerce owners would blame the Gilets Jaunes. But they, the police have never targeted these looters and these black bloc. This guy was actually shot in the face last Saturday. He was shot in the face um, during the protest. He had his hands tied behind his back, so he was literally dripping blood onto the pavement, and he was only given treatment because the medics insisted that he be treated. He was hit in the face with an LBD-40 flashball bullet. When I was on the march, I've, I've told you a few of the things um, that I remarked on. 
But the thing that was most shocking for me, I was on that march for maybe four and a half, five hours. There were over 15,000 people there. Children, women, I would say at least 50% of their marches were women. There were elderly, there were people from every spectrum of French society. There were anarchists, there were human rights activists, there were animal rights <laughs> activists, there were... It, it was incredible. It was actually a very uplifting experience for me to be surrounded by people who were politically aware, who were prepared to put their lives on the line to actually bring about change in France, uh, and who, who were passionate about what they were doing. And, and there was support. As every street we walked down, we saw people on balconies waving yellow balloons or, or waving the French flag. At the end of the march, uh, the previously injured, um, I think now, as I said, there's 19 who have lost an eye. There is something like uh, eight or nine now who've lost hands from the, the use of the grenade. There was one guy yesterday on the Arc de Triomphe. Um, as we arrived at the Place de la République, they diverted the previously wounded away because they had already heard that the police were starting to use tear gas against the people who had already arrived in the Place. Um, we arrived in the Place, I was walking around among the people. This was at the end of a peaceful march. People were having hamburgers, people were talking to each other, they were sitting around, they were tired, but they were about to drift home. And at this point, the police started to rain tear gas down on us. And I mean literally rain down. And by the way, they're no longer using the C6 tear gas, they're using the C3 tear gas, which is a much more corrosive tear gas. It can do serious damage to the cornea of the eye. It can cause lesions and burns and chronic illness in people if they suffer saturation of this gas. And believe me, those people suffered saturation. So at this point, when the tear gas is, is raining down, everybody tried to, to run to the side streets. Place de la République is huge. There are a number of arterial roads and side streets. Every single one was blocked by police cordons. And when I'm talking police cordons, I'm talking the kind of uh, <laughs> heavily militarized police that you saw in those photographs. 15 vans deep behind the police cordons. We approached one of the lines and we asked to go through to escape the tear gas. We were told, no, we have to go back. But not only us, even civilians and tourists were pushed back into the tear gas, into the place where the tear gas is still raining down. So this is a kettling procedure of civilians. Then, as soon as people were eventually, because what the police lines then, I was actually bodily, <laughs> literally picked up and pushed down the street because I, I actually argued with one of the police. I said, why are you putting civilians in danger? His answer to me was, peu importe, I don't care. So they pushed all of the civilians, and as I said, that included children, it included elderly, it included disabled, into the square, which was being saturated by tear gas. And at that point, they started to charge the crowd that is already weakened by tear gas with truncheon wielding police officers. And when I say charge, this was literally like a, like a bull ring. So they charged the crowd, scything people, and then trampling them underfoot. When the people reacted with what they could, some were picking up stones, some were, were just pushing back. And this includes journalists and medics. Then the other police lines started to fire LBD bullets into the crowd at very close range. So I, didn't, I don't need to describe the, the, the scenario to you, but, but this was like a war scene. And the only thing I can say is that the media is portraying it, which is in line uh, with the Interior Ministry and with Macron's government, not of repression, but of self-defense by the police forces against violent gilets jaunes, who are unarmed, and who now, by the way, have no right to wear a gas mask to protect themselves, because this according to the new law that may well be accepted in the upper house in French parliament, they can no longer hide their faces. <laughs> so that literally means that you are not allowed to wear um, a gas mask and you're not allowed to put a helmet on your head or, or wear goggles to protect your eyes against being blinded by French security forces. There is also a um, request from certain act activists uh, for a moratorium against private 
security companies that are also being involved in the repression of the Gilets Jaunes. So what I wanted to try to portray, because I have actually no idea of how Norwegian media is, is portraying the Gilets Jaunes, this is an organic movement. Of course they are trying to infiltrate it, of course they are trying to discredit it, of course they are trying to provide controlled opposition to it, like the Foulard Rouge, the Red Scarves. But the Gilets Jaunes deserve our support. Why? Because one of their main agenda points is direct democracy. The use of the referendum, where basically they will achieve, they, they will have a set number of signatures to achieve in order to call a referendum on specific points. That is what is terrifying Macron's globalist neoliberal government, because it will take away their monopoly of power. So all I can say is, je suis gilet jaune, I'm very proud to be. I'm proud of the French people for every weekend going out on the streets and succumbing to the blows of their totalitarian state, because I cannot find any word other than that to describe it. Macron was elected by the plutocrats to defend the plutocrats, and he would like to turn France into a plutocracy and to go as far away as possible from the French Republic ideal. Meanwhile, of course, he's intervening in Venezuela and Syria and looting and plundering in those countries. So I hope that just gives you some insight into who are the Gilets Jaunes and why, in my view, they deserve our support.